1 to 7. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 7. Good morning. How can I help you? I'm thinking of taking a year off university next year and I'd like to travel around Europe. OK, then. Do you have any idea where you'd like to go? Well, I was thinking of starting in France and then working my way up to Eastern Europe, possibly going as far as Slovakia. Well, there are a number of ways you can do this, and we have various options available. It really depends on your budget and how you'd like to travel. That's just the thing, really. Um, I mean, I've just finished my second year at university, so obviously I'd like to do it in as cheap a way as possible. That's fine. Could you give me a rough idea of the price range you're looking at? Realistically speaking, I'm hoping to pay between about £700 and £900. Pounds. I could stretch to £1,100, pounds, but that's really my limit. How long are you thinking of going for? About 10 months. To be honest, you'd be better off travelling for about 7 months, if that's your budget. OK, that's not too bad. So, how would you suggest I travel? Well, because of the time limit, I don't think walking is a viable option. Of course, in this day and age, the most convenient way to get around is by flying, particularly if you've got quite a bit you want to see in a short space of time. Saying that, I still think the best way to get around Europe is by train. As a student, you can also get a student rail card, which means cheap affairs. That sounds brilliant. How do I go about getting a rail card? Well, if you decide that's what you want to do, then we can organise that all for you. You'll need to fill in a form and provide us with two passport photos, mm -hmm. and we'll do the rest. It costs about £36 plus about £10 administration costs. Great. That's really not expensive at all. And what about buses? I was just thinking if I decide to go to places which are a bit more remote... There are always local buses, but these are not always a good idea. They can be quite unreliable and in some areas quite dangerous because the buses tend to be overcrowded and some of the drivers drive way too fast. So I would suggest you don't do this. That sounds quite frightening. So what are my options then? You could hire a car, but it can be expensive. Still... I do think if you're thinking about going to smaller towns and places which are off the beaten track, then hiring a car is by far the better way to do it. You can also look at sharing the costs by hiring a car with someone else. That's a good idea. I guess I could put a message on the internet. You could do that. But don't forget that you meet people when you're travelling and you'll probably find someone who's going to the same place as you are. That's true. I want to stay in youth hostels, so I'm sure I'll find people who are interested in going to the same places. Oh, one last thing. What about taxis? I was thinking about if I go out at night. I use taxis all the time here. Oh, but taxis abroad are a different story. In certain countries, they're no problem, but by and large, taxi fares are high. Oh. If you do go out at night, try walking home, but make sure you don't do this alone. Try and find people to go out with at night or come home at a reasonable time. But if you're staying in youth hostels, you should find plenty of young people to go out with at night. I'm sure I will. Now you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen to the next part of the conversation and answer questions 8 to 10. 
Now, have you thought about how you'd like to travel to France? Not really, no. There are basically three ways. You can go by ferry, which leaves every day and night, or there's the hovercraft, which is more pricey, but will get you there quicker, and, of course, you could fly. Well, I don't think flying is an option for me, as it'll be too expensive. So I suppose I'll choose one of the other two. It's a pity, really, as I don't fancy the idea of travelling by sea. Last time I did that, I got terribly seasick. <laughs> well, you're in luck then, as at the moment there is a special deal on flights to France. Ah. In fact, a plane ticket is now half the price of a ferry ticket, which is usually the cheapest option. That's great. I'll do that then. I much prefer flying anyway. I'll need to get some details off you then. Firstly, how will you be paying? Cash, cheque or credit card? If you pay by cheque, you'll need a cheque guarantee card. I don't have my cheque book with me, so it'll have to be by credit card. Fine, that's no problem. If you could just sign over here, and then we'll have a look at flight times, and I can sort out a youth travel card for you. Fine. Oh, can I use your pen, please? No problem. Now, let's look at times. There is a flight leaving at 9am, and one that leaves half an hour later... Or you can choose a later flight at 11.30. No, I think 11.30 is too late, so I think I'd prefer the flight that leaves after 9. I'm not very good at getting up in the morning. <laughs> no problem. Just give me a moment. Right, that's booked for you. Please remember that if you want to change this, you must give 24 hours notice or you will lose your place. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. First, look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully. Who's next, please? I think I am. How can I help you? I just came in on flight 372 from Singapore at 11.30 and my luggage hasn't arrived. I've been waiting at the baggage claim for about half an hour now and everything seems to have come off the plane. The conveyor belt has stopped and all the passengers have gone. So I came here to find out what has happened to my bag. Can I see your ticket, please? Here it is. So you came from Hong Kong today and changed planes in Singapore, right? Yes. The connection in Singapore was a tight one. The plane got in late and I had to rush to get to the next flight. That's the problem right there. There wasn't enough time to get your bags onto the connecting flight. Normally Singapore Airport is very efficient. Now, I need you to fill in these forms. Your name? Jenny Lee. Address? I guess you want my address here. I'm staying with relatives. Just a minute, I'll have to look it up. It looks like 583. No, it's 533 East 67th Street in Riverside. Do you have the phone number there? Yes, I do. It's, um, 9301. Four two six nine. So you came in on Qantas flight 392. Do you know the number of the flight out of Hong Kong? Let me see. 
I think it was Cafe Pacific 900 or something. Oh, yes. It says here, CX912. Before the broadcast continues, look at questions 15 to 20. You will now listen to the second part of the talk. Right. Now, I need a description of the luggage. How many pieces did you check in? Just one. Can you describe it for me? Here is a picture to help you. OK. It's a big bag, like this one. Rectangular. Not hard shell, but soft covered. And it has a zipper around the front. Is it black? No, sort of a grey colour. Any identification? Just a tag with my name on it. Any other features? Well, it has wheels and a retractable handle on the end, so you can pull it, as well as the handle in the middle. OK, that's fine. Now, if your bag missed the connection, I'm sure it'll be put on the next flight. I'll email Singapore as soon as I finish here. The next flight comes in at 17.50. That's 10 to 6 this evening. You can pick it up then. 10 to 6? That's too long to wait. Can I get my uncle to pick up the bag on his way home from work? Sorry, you have to be here yourself to clear customs. Of course. I almost forgot. Will the bag come here, to this desk? Yes. You pick it up here, then take it over to the customs area. By the way, don't forget to bring your passport. You will also need to have the key plus your ticket with a baggage claim number on it. Oh, OK. Guess I'll have to come back tomorrow then. It's lucky I packed everything I need for now in my carry-on bag. Yes, that's always a good idea. Be prepared. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students discussing the subject of rock art. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Hello, David. Oh, hi, Mia. Sorry I'm a bit late. Oh, no problem. Thanks for agreeing to help me with my assignment today. I really needed to go over it with someone. Sure. You were going to talk about European rock art, weren't you? Yes, the rock drawings in the caves of Lascaux in Western France. Oh, fantastic. Over 13,000 years old, I believe. What sort of drawings are they? They're drawings of animals, on the whole, but you can also find some human representations, as well as some signs. There are roughly 600 drawings at Lascaux. Really? Were they mostly pictures of bulls? Well, no, actually. The animal most depicted was the horse. Hmm. Have a look at this graph. Hmm. It shows the distribution of the different animals. You see? First the horse, 
and then after that a sort of prehistoric bull. Oh, okay. That's interesting, isn't it? And the third most commonly drawn creature was the stag. There were some other animals, but these are the main ones. What are the drawings like? I mean, what sort of style? Well, the bulls are depicted very figuratively. They're not very realistic. They're very big by comparison to the other drawings of people and signs. They appear to be almost three-dimensional in some cases, following the contours of the cave walls. But of course, they're not. Amazing. Perhaps they felt these animals were the most impressive and needed to be represented like that. Yeah, maybe. The drawings of humans, by contrast, consist of just simple lines, like the stick figures my little sister draws. Perhaps humans were seen as less important. Hmm. Perhaps. What about the signs? How did they draw them? There doesn't appear to be much evidence of signs, and those that have been found are usually made up of little points. Rather like Aboriginal art from Australia. Yes, something like that, but not as complex, of course. So, apart from the bulls and horses and stags, were there any other creatures depicted? In one or two chambers, you do find pictures of fish,、oh. but they're quite rare. What sort of size is the cave? It must be quite large to have that many pictures. Well, it's actually a number of interlinking chambers, really. Here's a map showing where the different drawings can be found. Oh, good. Let's have a look at that. The first twenty meters inside the cave slope down very steeply to the first hall in the network. That's called the Great Hall of the Bulls. Here. Okay. Then, off to the left, we have the painted gallery, which is about thirty meters long and is basically a continuation of this first hall. But further into the cave. Exactly.、Oh. Then we find a second lower gallery called the lateral passage. This opens off the aisle to the right of the Great Hall of the Bulls. It connects the next chamber with an area known as the main gallery. At the end of the main gallery is the chamber of felines. There are one or two other connecting chambers, but there's no evidence of man having been in these rooms. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-eight to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-eight to thirty. Is the cave open to the public today? Well, no, because after the initial discovery in nineteen forty, it was opened and literally millions of people came through to see the drawings.、Uh. Then, in the fifties, the experts started to worry about the damage being done to the drawings, and the government finally closed the Lascaux cave in nineteen sixty-three. Is that so? It wasn't really the tourists that were doing the harm, but the fact that after thousands of years the cave was suddenly open to the atmosphere, and so bacteria and fungi started to destroy the pictures. You need a special permit to enter the cave now, and very few people can get that, unless they're scientists or have some official status. It's a shame, but I can see that they had to do something to protect the cave. So that means you can no longer see this rock art. Well, not exactly. What they've done is recreate the drawings in a man-made cave, which you can visit. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, the authorities decided to reproduce the two best sections of the site, so they've created a life-size copy of the Hall of the Bulls and of the painted gallery. It's just a cement shell, which corresponds in shape to the interior of the original. So now you can visit the caves without actually harming any of the fifteen thousand year old paintings.、Mm -hmm. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk given by Dr. Miranda James. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Now, listen carefully to the talk, and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of talks we have arranged for the Overseas Students Association this semester. Dr. James has very kindly agreed to speak to us today on the topic of public speaking. And judging from the large numbers of you here, it's clearly a subject of great interest and relevance. Dr. James. Hello. It's good to see so many of you here, and hopefully, what I'm going to tell you will be useful to you both here at the university and in your future employment. Many people avoid speaking publicly. By which I mean, in front of say ten or more people, not because they lack the ability, but mainly because they lack confidence, which is really only due to lack of practice. Today, as a consequence of the influence of television, audiences expect speakers to be relatively brief and to the point, in addition to being well informed. And interesting or entertaining. Probably the most important part of public speaking is what you do beforehand, by which I mean preparation. This includes practical details, such as knowing precisely what your topic is, and exactly how long you are expected to talk for. You should also plan the content thoroughly. A good strategy is to write out the content as you intend to say it, and then make brief notes, preferably on small cards, which you use to talk from. This way, you sound more natural. You incorporate pauses while you look at your notes, and you can then look at your audience while you are speaking. Never read your speech without looking at the audience. Eye contact is a very important part of communicating with an audience, so deliberately move your head and look around at your audience. Pauses are important, as most people, when they are nervous, tend to rush through their speech. Now you have some time to look at questions thirty-six to forty. Now listen and answer questions thirty-six to forty. Practice speaking slowly. This gives you more time to pronounce your words correctly. It's always easier for your audience to listen to someone whose speaking is clear and calmly paced, so that they can understand the ideas being explained. And the bigger the group. The more slowly you should speak. Remember to project your voice, speaking clearly to the person furthest away from you. It's a good idea to rehearse and record yourself. Pay attention to your intonation when you listen to yourself. It's even harder if you're speaking in a second language. I would imagine. But there's nothing worse than listening to a flat, monotonous voice. So try to vary your tone and rhythm. This will add meaning to your words. Lastly, pay attention to both your posture 
and your gestures. A confident person stands or sits in a small group with their head up, chin out, and shoulders back. Try to avoid scratching or fiddling with your hair or beard or pens, jewelry, and so on. These movements can distract and irritate your audience. Yet you may be unaware of them yourself. Another reason for rehearsing, preferably with feedback from a friend, or better still, on video. I hope these few tips will make your experience of speaking in public a little easier. Remember, practice makes perfect. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.